Tell me about the voter ID debate yesterday. How did it turn out for your party? We won. What else do you need to know? <laughs> what, what about you? Uh, how did you feel like the Democrats worked out during that struggle? Well, I mean, I think Republicans clearly won. Texas lost. I mean, this was a, an issue that's, you know, very heartfelt on both sides of the aisle. But overwhelmingly, anything that we can do to limit voter participation in the state of Texas without considering every alternative to encourage people to vote legally, you know, we're not doing our best work. So I think we, we just passed a half of a loaf of bread. I, I disagree there. I think that uh, we did encourage voter participation by eliminating voter fraud or taking a step towards eliminating voter fraud. Because you said there are additional bills that are going to come out next week. Yes. What, what are those pertaining to? Mainly mail-in voter fraud, voter registration. That's the areas that I've identified as uh, what we need to work on. And uh, was voter fraud something that you saw more as the problem? Well, I mean, you know, you've been covering the legislature for quite some time. The one thing we don't have in this building is time. And so when we have an issue like voter registration before us on the floor, election reforms, we should take care of everything in one fell swoop, come up with something that's collective and comprehensive, and we should have passed a vehicle that allowed people to go and vote and vote with an ID, allow people to utilize IDs that are common to them, and making sure that anybody who wants to vote that is eligible to vote should be able to vote and shouldn't have any barrier to protect them from doing that. We had an opportunity to discuss coming up with a standardized ID, making our driver's license a voter registration card. Republicans didn't want to vote for that. In fact, they voted against that. Uh, they did not want to make it easier for one license to be the standard, but yet our voter registration cards that we use right now which will be the same cards we use in the next election after this bill passes, it still won't have our picture on it. If the so we're not really solving the problem. We're kicking the can down the road. If the Democrats really felt that way, they would have proposed a bill that did exactly that. They proposed it in the way of an amendment to try to water our, down our bill. Uh, they've had plenty of time. We've been wrestling with this issue for several, several sessions. At every step, they've opposed us. They've had plenty of time to make another proposal, and they have not. And what about the fact that uh, Democrats are pointing to the fact that there have been no voter ID fraud cases? We can't say that for sure. The problem is, how do you prove it? How do you catch someone with a, with a false ID? The individual that's going to vote with a false ID is probably not the individual that, in fact, uh, should have been voting. Who, where is that individual going to be? What, one thing we do know is that there's... I pointed out in my, in my uh, response to the Democrats that I have counties in my district that have more voters. I have at least one county that had more voters than eligible voters, more registered voters than eligible voters, over 100 percent registration, which is, is just wide open for fraud. And then I had other counties that were above the state average. I have counties in my district that were, in fact, uh, well known for voter fraud. So I think this is a good first step. And, and that's, that's precisely our point. I mean, we are not writing statewide legislation for anybody's district. You know, the district that Representative Alicero represents is as large as the district that I represent. He has multiple counties. I have multiple blocks in inner city San Antonio. You know, our interests are completely different. But we all share the same goal, which is to make sure people are voting and voting legally. But here's the fact. Since 2002, there have been 50 million votes cast in the state of Texas. There's only been one prosecution of voter fraud. And that was for a young man who voted in his father's name. They had the same name. His father was dead. He voted. And General Abbott, our attorney general, the person that I have a lot of respect for, this is the person who enforces these cases uh, in addition to our prosecutors and our DAs, he charged the man and ultimately settled it with a $200 misdemeanor fine. I mean, yes, this happens, but to not be able to discuss this by way of amendments, which is a very valid way to pass legislation in this chamber because we don't have time. We have the ability to pass amendments. There was not one single amendment that was accepted, and the, and the, and the few that were had to deal with allowing Native Americans to use IDs so they could we, vote we with accepted, their tribal cards. We accepted more than... than there, were 60, one or two. there were 60 amendments, and I would challenge anybody to tell me that we passed you know, a significant number of amendments off the floor. I think the some, record some of the amendments they proposed were just plain ridiculous. But yeah, I, I think the intent 
that the uh, Democrats had were to try to delay us as long as possible on the vote. And in addition, with whatever their amendments were, I think they were intended to somehow be a poison pill to the entire bill. That's, that's the way I viewed their amendments. That's why I didn't vote for them. We can talk about the ridiculous amendments. Let's have a driver's license be your voter identification card. Ridiculous. Let's vote against that. I, let's I don't allow, think it's ridiculous. Let's, let's I do not think that's ridiculous. If you, well, if you voted against it, you, you said it was ridiculous. Well, uh, that's not the way the bill, that's not the way the amendment read. I don't think that's ridiculous. I think eventually we're going to have to go to some kind of, of I, I'd like to see some kind of voter, national voter ID card, because we can't do this on a state by state basis with any sense of security. I, I'm satisfied that what we passed will enhance security. I can't overcome the inconsistency. We can't do a state by state plan. We need a national plan. We just voted a state plan yesterday. Uh, uh, I, I would support a driver's license eventually. But we had the opportunity to do it yesterday. You know, this is, you know, mañana is the busiest day of the week in the Capitol because we never get to it because we kick the can down the road. We had ample opportunity. We spent over 12 hours on that House floor debating ideas, uh, and some of them were very reasonable. Why are we going to require senior citizens over the age of 70, many of which don't even drive anymore? My mother's over the age of 70. She doesn't drive. She has Parkinson's disease. Now she has to go out and get a free ID if she's going to vote. She doesn't have a passport. Uh, she doesn't have a national birth certificate with her picture on it. Now she it has to get a free ID, and he's going to find it funny. I, I find it. He's going to find it funny difficult. because he's been my my mother's been voting the same poll in the same neighborhood that she's lived in since 1970, and all of a sudden those volunteers and election judges that know her by name and know her to be the precinct chair for that precinct are now going to have to tell her to go to DPS, and bear in mind in inner city San Antonio, there was one DPS station within the entire. Loop 410 of San Antonio. This is the. I don't understand the, the how seventh, anyone. The seventh largest city in America. I don't understand how anyone can function in this society without some, one of the forms of ID that we agreed would be acceptable as a voter identification card. That is just not realistically possible. This is 2011. This is the United States of America. IDs are needed for everything we do in our society today, from from cashing a check. Uh, opening a bank account, renting a movie. As simple as renting a movie, you need to produce an ID card. And, and if and you're 70 years old, you're not cashing a check. You're getting direct deposit. If you're on Social Security, you're not renting a movie. You're buying one on cable TV. You don't need an ID to do that. I mean, if you're homebound and you have people taking care of you, you have people driving you to your affairs, you have a Medicaid card, Medicare card, you have all, all the things you need. My point being is this, if a driver's license is the only accepted ID, my mother doesn't have one. Well, those same people that, that he says help them do these other things could help them get an identification card. That's just unrealistic to expect that this is going to be some kind of insurmountable obstacle. For another thing, his mother could vote by mail-in ballot if she chose, if she really doesn't have an ID, like he says. And, that, and, and that, he's right about that. And you know what? That's where 70% of the mail fraud is, where the voting fraud is. 70% of the fraud in voting is mail ballot. There's not one word, not one sentence in Senate Bill 14 that deals with that. And there may be a thousand bills in the pipeline that we're going to address. What bills the have the days. Democrats filed on, on mail in voter fraud? Not one. And, I will and tell they've you. had years and years, and it's the same argument that I'm making today about they want a, a, a Texas state ID card for voting. They've had years, they've been, we've had this thing, debate for years, session after session. Why did they wait till the last minute, literally the last minute, to propose this, quote, state ID card for, for voting that they want now? They, they could have done this sessions ago. They're not really interested in an uh, identification card like what they are proposing. What they're re really interested in, in my opinion, is leaving the door open for fraud, and that's not what I want. 